Klung Bin's a band that I've listened to every day since my friend showed me them in November. I appreciate you, Drew. Over the past couple years, the Houston instrumental band has made quite the name for themselves by producing dreamy, high influence psychedelic music. It's a sound that seems like it came straight out of a Tarantino movie. It's been a very long time since I've been this enamored by a new group. Contrary to most music, the more I listen to Krungbin, the more I like it. Perhaps part of their uniqueness lies in their sonic approach of simplicity. The band consists of only three players with Laura Lee on the bass, Mark Spear on guitar, and Donald DJ Johnson on the drums. Each of them has a unique background and musical history that I'll touch on. Mark Spear said he grew up wanting to play drums because they looked like so much fun, but he couldn't afford them so he started out playing bass. Growing up he'd use a 4 track cassette recorder to make songs. He'd use Casio drums playing them with his fingers. Eventually his friend let him borrow his guitar and Mark learned how to play. He said he continued playing bass as he got older, but he got more work playing guitar. He had to pay his bills so he played more and more guitar and he got better with that instrument. Mark played in lots of bands as a young man, and he played guitar at a church in Houston. That's where he first met DJ. So I've known DJ since we played at church in Houston, Texas, on about 12 years now. Okay. Um, I came in playing guitar in a worship band wow. in a little, little church in Houston, Texas called St. John's. It's technically Beyonce's church. <laughs> uh, I personally have not seen Beyonce at church. She's, you know, she got a lot of work to do. DJ started playing drums when he was just three years old. He had a tiny drum kit and would play with the little cardboard things that come off hangers because they were quieter. He played at church when he was 10 and concert percussion in school in an all-state band. When he got older, he quit drums and switched to keyboards. I think I stopped around like, like, you know, when I graduated high school, I believe, like um, around 18. Okay, and why, why was that? Did you get into something else? Or? Well, I'm from Houston, Texas. And in, in any given place, you can stop, take a penny out of your pocket, and throw it, and you'll hit a great drummer. <laughs> um, so too much competition. Yeah, it was too much, too much competition. So I started playing keyboards. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Mark and I, the church that we played together at St. John's, yeah. I played organ. DJ and Mark would hang out every Tuesday after church rehearsal at a pub called Rudyard's, where they'd share burgers and drinks and talk about music. Then one week, Mark met Laura Lee. I met Mark through friends uh, on a lunch break from work. Okay. Uh, went to a friend's house for lunch, and Mark was watching a documentary on Afghani music. Oh, At the time, I was studying art history from that part of the world. Um, so I saw him watching it and was like, who is this guy? I uh, started talking to him about it, uh, exchanged numbers, and I got a text from him randomly one day. I hadn't heard from him in ages. Got a text that just said, the universe smiles upon you, and I knew exactly who it was from. The two started hanging out, and Mark began teaching Laura how to play bass. He showed her the music she should listen to in order to play. This is Scientist Wins the World Cup, um, which is it's what I learned bass on. This is my ABCs, um, which Mark gave to me to learn on. Mark's such a good such a good bandmate. And he is. He is such partner. a good bandmate. <laughs> yeah. Jacqueline, Jacqueline, Jacqueline. Can you bond this Laura started joining DJ and Mark every Tuesday night for burgers. They did this for three years before they ever started a band. At the time, Laura was still a school teacher. I was teaching maths and... Uh, although I loved teaching, I, I hated my job. Um, and Mark was going on tour opening up for Bonobo um, with a band called Yippa, and they needed a new bass player. Um, I just started playing, so my confidence was not very high, but Mark uh, insisted that I was good enough yeah. to be the bass player for this band. Amazing. Try it out, I got it, and I quit my teaching job and went rock and roll and decided to yeah. go on tour. Amazing. Um, 
And when we came off the road, I, I just went to Mark and I was like, I want to start a band and do this forever. Um, so we started a band and the natural third to come on board was DJ because we'd been talking about music for years. So with the band assembled, the group started taking trips to Mark's family barn in Burton, Texas, where they jam in solitude, with no Wi-Fi or distractions. Mark has always been into digging for music that's not in English. He said because he doesn't know what they're saying, what moves him are the melodies and how they're singing. In that sense, it achieves a lot of the same stuff as instrumental music. Around this time, Mark and Laura found Thai music through a blog. I was on different blogs and finding stuff and then I found this little sidebar and took me to this one blog that is specialized in Thai music like Luk Tung and Mulam and all these different like shadow music and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, this stuff is so cold. <laughs> so I couldn't stop listening to it. Yeah. Um, we would listen to it every single day. We'd listen to it on the way out to the barn to go rehearse or record stuff. And it's not like we were really intentionally trying to sound that way. It's just mm -hmm. kind of, that's what we were listening to. So with everyone in the band listening to a lot of 60s and 70s Thai funk, naturally they picked a Thai word to name the band. Krungbin means airplane in Thai, and it goes with the global influence of sounds they incorporate into their music. The trio was writing music and playing some small gigs, but their big break happened when they released 2014's A Calf Born in Winter. The title track, which is playing right now, was included in Bonobo's 2013 Late Night Tales. Through that happening, Krungbin signed to the label Nighttime Stories, and later that year in October 2014, the band released their four-track EP, The Infamous Bill. The trio's colorful, groovy sound made people eager to hear what the band would release next. On November 6, 2015, Krungbin released their debut studio album, The Universe Smiles Upon You. Universe is ultimately an instrumental album. The songs are built around focused bass lines and perfectly mixed drumming. With no singer in the group, Mark uses his guitar to fill that gap. I'm just try I'm trying to like be lyrical about it because we don't really have a singer that sings words. So I'm trying to sing like melodic, uh, like a singer would. If you're just hearing me kind of play, you're like, yeah, it's just noodling. But over the changes, it creates a story. Krungbin's fame spiked in 2016 when they went on tour opening for Father John Misty around Europe. Krungbin then played a series of festivals including Glastonbury, Bonnaroo, and Austin City Limits. In 2016, Mark made a Spotify playlist of Middle Eastern funk and soul music, and it became the band's personal soundtrack on the road in the months leading up to recording their next album. If the first album was a trip to Thailand, then their sophomore album is a sonic trip to the Middle East. On January 26, 2018, Krungbin released Cone Total El Mundo. The album's title is an ode to Laura Lee's grandpa, who used to ask her, Como te quiero? How much do you love me? And she'd respond, Con total el mundo, with all the world. Every track on this album is profoundly pleasant. It's music that's thoughtful, relaxing, and even danceable at times. I think it's interesting to hear how they record their music. So DJ has sent me a big bank of drum loops. I have a new set now to work with. Um, 
and I just play, I just put them on a loop and play over them. And then I send it to Mark, and Mark chops up and picks the pieces that he likes, puts it together, and then plays over it. Yeah, and send it back, and then. So it's like a, you know, relay race um, writing. But it's, it's nice because we all have the chance to work on our parts sort of individually. Since the release of Cone Total El Mundo, Krungbin has continued to rise in fame, and they've garnered millions of streams and have a jam-packed 2019, touring around the globe and playing massive festivals like Coachella. Perhaps the music's appeal lies in its versatility. You can listen to it while you're working, while you're cooking, while you're Ubering. Really, whatever you fancy, Krungbin should be on your daily shuffle. Listening to Krungbin is like traveling back in time to foreign lands. And maybe that's the beauty in music streaming. Every day we have a chance to find new music spawned from an array of time periods and genres. And Krungbin has managed to merge all of those elements into smooth, enjoyable listening. It's special to see a group find success, especially when they're such lovely, humble people. If you're interested, you should check out Krungbin's curated Spotify playlists that contain music that influenced them while they were recording. I found some super funky music digging through these playlists, so you should definitely check it out. Also, this is a perfect segue to announce that I've created some curated playlists on my Spotify for each of the musicians that I've covered in my artist bios. So from Odessa to Frank Ocean to Travis Scott to Krungbin. You know, I've hand-selected my favorite songs from each of these artists and put it into a cohesive playlist. So you can find them on Spotify by searching for Jake Zeman and going to my playlist. So I appreciate you guys watching and remember, stay funky. We just like to ask our guests for some words of wisdom or advice. Let's talk about some music. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah. All right. That's a pretty good one. Shout out to music. Shout out to music. Shout out to music. Yeah.